Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to another uh, Warriors Whiteboard Wednesday. Here we are with another week, another episode. So today we're going to talk about the shoot again, right? One of the most popular, but also one of the most misunderstood uh, weapons in the ninja's arsenal. Okay, so uh, let's just dive right into things, right? So a um, couple of problems that I see when it comes to uh, training. And again, I had somebody comment on one of my videos a while back because I was talking about misunderstandings and people going down the wrong roads because they have bad information or their belief system needs to be a certain way or whatever. And they just they just posted this comment. We get it. Students suck. This has nothing to do with anybody sucking. This has to do with like getting our head in the right place. It's one of the reasons why I created uh, the Ninja no Hachimon program, right? The eight gates of the ninja, which was a litmus test way back in ancient Japan, right? Um, my, 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 my thinking is, how do we train in something that we can't define, right? Because there's, everybody has their own brand of ninja, ninjutsu because they think they can just kind of throw stuff together. It's kind of like uh, watching people want, just skipping over the basics and certain types of training as I was coming up through the ranks because they would watch Hatsumi Sensei or Master Teachers move a certain way, right? Which, if you don't know what you're looking at, it can look like, I don't know, for lack of a better word, it can look like mush, right? It looks like they're just doing stuff and things are working out. And then, you know, some students will, will try it and it's not working out, right? And so they'll have to go ask other people and begrudgingly, right, they'll start doing this other stuff, but there's still a disconnect, right? Why are we doing this when he does this kind of thing? Well, because he, he has, um, he's mastered timing, distancing, angling, a bunch of these other things, and he's already gone through that process, right? So now he's in a different phase, right, where he's, he's cut out unnecessary movements, right? You got a whole bunch of other folks that try to do the mush, right, and it doesn't work out. And then what do they do? Well, they quit. They, you know, that shit doesn't work whatever they go jumping off onto something else that has more martial arty kind of looking stuff and there's a definitive right there's a fit it's just a bunch of you know whatever right so th this is not about anybody sucking this is about getting our head wrapped around what the issue is right and again for a lot of folks right one of the problems is movie ninja right i mean come on we all know it right whether it's Ninja Turtles or it's the ninja, you know, taking on the entire mafia and clearing an entire building, their hive or whatever, and it, just this solo warrior kicking ass. And I mean, this is built into our psyche, right? To be that guy. Um, but anyway, right? So just movie ninja, plain and simple, right? And the tendency to stop at what things look like and what, what typically is seen in, in movie ninja stuff, right? The, the shuriken is thrown, it sticks in things, it sticks in people, it kills them, whatever, right? Okay. Second problem uh, that I see is things like government restrictions, right? Governmental restrictions on anything that looks scary as opposed to something that's actually dangerous. I'm not saying that shuriken are not dangerous, right? But if we were going to apply the same rules that are applied for some things, whether the social agendas to control them, limit them or just get rid of them right because people get hurt or people die well then cigarettes should be illegal cars should be illegal cell phones should have been illegal for how long because of the radiation that goes into your brain uh you know now people use uh what do you call them they use well testing a lot but they use uh the speaker phone and whatnot so it's farther away from their head but right, it's just not applied equally especially well they're not going to outlaw stuff that they want to use Right. So anyway, right. Um, that, that kind of reminds me of a, of a story. A bunch of years ago, I had this friend in training, and I, I don't know if he still trains or not. Um, we had this discussion, and he just made this blanket statement because I, I think I had a seminar or workshop coming up on uh, gun disarms, right? Doing that aspect of, of weapon training. And he said, I just make it, illegal, make it illegal, just get rid of all of them. Okay, well, I understand legality, but I also understand that criminals are going to get what criminals get. I mean, they're, that's by definition, right? But he said, no, let's just get rid of it, right? Well, after more spending more time with my friend, I realized that a big part of him wanting to get rid of them is 
he was really good at unarmed stuff. He was really good at close in, right? Taking canes away from somebody or clubs or knives or whatever. But see, guns change the dynamic, right? Somebody can shoot you from across the street and that would nullify all of the work he did in this realm because that realm is harder to deal with, especially if you don't have one, right? It's a whole different realm of training and whatnot. So did he want him to go away for social justice reasons or did he want to go want him to go away because it it contradicted how he wanted to see his level of mastery? Again, I'm not making a value judgment on my friend. It was just one of these things that came up. We have to be careful with these things, right? So anyway, with the first problem, right, the whole movie ninja thing, right, there's a disconnect between what I would call first stage throwing practice as an aspect of the training. We'll talk about this more as we go along, right? Um, well, let's just, let's just talk about that one as we go, right? So um, I'm going to come back to a bunch of this stuff, but here's, here's some problems, right? Excuse me. Hmm something in my face anyway so with the first problem there's this disconnect right the throwing this this disconnect between look we're throwing for target for precision those kind of things but it can ignore or skip over the recognition that combat is dynamic okay chances are you're not going to be standing still. He's not going to be standing still. And now not only do you have to hit a moving target, and even if you had to hit a stationary target, right, probably not a, not a good idea for you to be stationary, right? As they say in Murphy's Law of Combat, um, if the enemy's in range, so are you, right? So I have to hit a moving target while evading, while moving, under pressure, with a lot of muscle tension, and still be able to get in the ballpark enough to at least freak this guy out, right? Except that if I get stuck on, it's kind of like people that go and like do axe throwing, you know, with a friend over a beer, okay? Great fun, right? And it's not that it's not a skill. It is, right? Combat's a whole different, it's a whole different realm, okay? Um, it skips over the recognition that the ninja sees the shuriken just like any weapon as a tool, right? So what's the ninja's perspective on this item? Not what we think it is, not what the movies say it is, right? Somebody who has gone through the training, who is a living example of what's in the scrolls, right? It, within this realm, right? Needed to, right? How did they see this item, okay? Uh, another problem or another thing that it jumps over is that you don't always want your weapon to stick, right? You don't always want your weapon to stick. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hmm, I'm going to write that one out. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's do it this way. Don't always. I know. For, for a lot of folks, this is now like, well, what's my ego going to do, man? Like, if it doesn't stick, right? Every time I throw it and it just kind of bounces out, I feel like shit because, like, it didn't stick. Okay, let me tell you another story, right? A bunch of years ago, uh, I was probably in junior high school, maybe even a little bit younger. And my friend and I were throwing darts, and we were bantering back and forth and whatnot. And I didn't realize until this moment that he had um, some anger management issues. Okay. And one thing led to another. And next thing I know, he threw a dart at me. Okay. And it stuck in my thigh. Okay? All the way in, right? All the way up to the, the nub. If you've thrown darts, you know what I'm talking about, right? Stuck in my, my thigh, right? And after a quick... Ah, looking down at this thing, you know what I did? I pulled it out and threw it back at him. Okay. It wasn't, it didn't go deep enough to debilitate. It didn't hit anything that would have been, you know, debilitate me or whatever. Right. And again, we're, we're going to go into some of this stuff with the way stars are built and, and whatnot here in just a bit. 
but I don't always want it to stick. Okay. Sometimes I do. We'll talk about reasons for that. But what if I need it for something else? What if, what if there's a different strategy in mind? Okay. If, if I use shoot again, like a lot of people do with anything where they're what I call a one hit wonder, right? They only know one way to do things. Then that's what they're stuck with. Okay. The way we define anything creates a ceiling. I say this all the time, right? It creates our biggest limitation. We can't grow beyond that. It's kind of like if I were hiring somebody to handle an area of the academy or maybe my consulting business or whatever, that was for a field that I know it, but I'm not that, right? It's one, it's not preferred. And two, it's not my forte, like IT or accounting or something like that, right? When I had that interview with that person, okay, and take this to the bank, because this is the way I would sit through an interview process if I were looking for a job. I run my own show, but either way, right? During that interview, I better learn something from that person that I didn't know before. I better learn at least one thing, okay? Because that tells me that that person knows things and I'm not just hiring a body to do task work. I'm hiring somebody because I need to grow. I need the, the academy to grow. I need my consultancy, whatever, to grow. And so I need people that are better at that realm than me. Why would I hire somebody that can do it exactly like me? Right? That creates a stagnation. It's kind of like when people go and work out with, with friends, they try to learn from different teachers and whatnot. And that person, their, their skill level is not that much higher than the student, right? Because, well, we're not, we don't even use the terms teacher and student. We're, we're friends. Okay, well, okay, your friend's probably not going to push you. Two, your friend's not going to challenge you, especially in realms where it might compromise the friendship, right? Your friend might even let you slide on some shit. And three, if your, fr if your friend and you, the guy showing you some stuff, is really, really close to your level of ability or maybe just above it, they can't help you grow that much. Okay? That's why I've always gone to teachers that just like, I barely comprehend what they're talking about because that forces me to grow. That forces me to learn things that it's, it's I don't have to like it. I don't have to dislike it. It's not about that. It's required for that level of ability. Okay. Anyway, all right. So what do we have? We have combat's dynamic, ninja's perspective on the weapon. I don't always want it to stick. Um, the the reality also is that like um, uh, all ninja weapons, or from a ninja's perspective, all weapons have multiple purposes. Multiple purposes. Let's talk about that here in a minute. Okay. There's multiple purposes for any given tool, right? Uh, a ninja's weapons. I don't care if we're talking about fists, swords, shuriken, whatever, right? It has to have more than one use, right? If you look at any special forces unit in the world, they have small teams and everybody in the team has specializations but they're also cross-trained because if the doc, the medic in your unit falls, somebody else better be able to do that work. Same thing with running certain types of uh, gear, uh, sniper rifle, whatever, right? Otherwise, you have a huge gap, okay? So multiple purposes, right? Okay. So anyway, and let's see, sorry, shifting around in my notes here. Uh, let's see. And then we have this other aspect, right, that has to do with stealth or concealment. Okay. In warfare, this goes all the way back to Sun Tzu's Art of War, right? Deception. Okay. As a matter of fact, in Sun Tzu's Art of War, and this is for everybody that, that complains because the government doesn't always tell them the truth. Okay? <laughs> Sun Tzu, we, we all want to follow things, right? Sun Tzu, cool, man, I learned all about warfare. Uh, did you pay attention to all the lessons or just the ones you wanted to, 
to learn, right? Because in Sun Tzu's Art of War, it says that uh, neither warfare or governments can operate effectively without deception. Okay, and it's not just about deceiving the people, right? If you let your secrets out and everybody knows what you're doing, well, then you're easier to wipe out. You're easier to infiltrate. You're easier to manipulate. Okay, so um, everybody likes to talk about, you know, I know this and I know this and I know this technique and I'm good over here and I've got that that bug out bag and I've got my 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 stores just in case the balloon goes up and shit happens and whatnot. Well, just tell your neighbors that when they haven't pre-planned and all the shit runs out at the store, they can just come to your house because you've got all this stuff stacked up. Yeah, but I got guns too. Yeah, I know. But when the whole fucking town shows up, right? So people need to think bigger, right? Stop thinking like a teenager that knows that much. And we need to think about the big picture, right? Not just about the positive, but what happens when things go sideways? What happens when I threw it at him, right? If we think about ancient Japan with the ninja, right? Ninja versus samurai. Great, right? I'm throwing it at the samurai. What's he wearing? Armor, right? <laughs> Lacquered wood, bamboo, or it could be colder times and whatnot. So they're wearing layers of kimono. What are the chances it's going to stick? Okay. Well, if I pass it through the gateway of his eye to his brain, it, yeah, no. You know how deep the ocular socket is? How big does your freaking shuriken have to be to actually have a point line up exactly right? I know what the movies show, right? I used to get all like warm and fuzzy about those things anyway. All right. So again, more on this stuff later as we as we go through this, because I want to talk about and we're, we're going to jump over to these three weapon aspects that we talked about. Uh, and I'm going to give you five skill sets that I mean, if we're looking at mastery of the weapon, then there's areas of training when we think about outcomes, right? When we think about what we might need to do in any given situation, right? People think about just the skill. Well, I'm just going to make it stick. I'm going to throw it. And I'm going to hit the target. What was your purpose behind throwing it to begin with? And do we even want to throw it? Which is where we're going to go next. Let me just change color here. Okay. Not me, the marker. Okay. So we've got these, and I didn't break out kanji and all that kind of stuff because it, it would take up too much space. But there's three syllables to the word shudiken, right? Shudiken. So I want to take a look at this because two of these are pretty cut and dry, right? But one of them, creates a shift, right? And there's actually, no, there's a bunch of ways to, to write some of this stuff out, but I'm gonna to stick to the most conventional things because that's what people know, okay? So shu, also pronounced te, right, is hand, okay? Hand, right, okay? Ken can mean sword, can mean blade, it can imply as it does in the ninja's art, weapon, okay? But conventionally, that kanji points to the idea of a blade, sword, that kind of thing, right? It's this ri character, okay? Because when people think about a shuriken, what do they call it? Well, it's a throwing star. The word throwing is always in there. Well, what about the spikes? Well, it's a throwing spike, okay? But see, here's a problem. There's only a few documented historical kind of uh, references, and you can look this stuff up. It's all over the internet, right? That actually in their, in their scroll areas for dealing with this kind of weapon or this idea, translate this in that direction, okay? Because conventionally, there are two kanji that we could use to write here. And the kanji that's used to write this makes all the difference, okay? The most common it's not throwing, right? Let's do that one first, okay? The least common is the kanji for the word release, which can also mean to flip, to fling, to imply throwing or whatever, but it's a release. I'm going to let go, okay? So a hand-released blade, okay? Throwing star, see? Told you, Sensei, okay? But the most common one, okay, actually means 
uh, inner, uh, yeah, like inner, inside, right? And it implies concealed, okay? So when we combine these two, shooty, right? Inner hand, we're talking about the palm, okay? It's the inside of the hand, right? Outside of the hand, inside of the hand, right? So not Uda, right? That kind of inside, that also implies back, hidden, difficult to see, the other side of this thing, whatever. I'm looking at a house, okay? The side that I'm standing on that I can see is the omote side to me right now. Everything else that I can't see is Uda. It's the back side. I can't see it, okay? But in this one, we're talking about the palm, okay? So what we're talking about is, is a blade that's concealed in the hand, okay? This uri, this, this, this uh, idea can also imply held, handheld blade, okay? Well, well, shit. Well, of course, I'm going to hold it until I throw it, or you're going to throw it at all, okay? There's a reason that the Japanese, samurai included, okay? typically avoid throwing things like spear and weapons, right? Because one, your enemy can pick it up and throw it back at you. Two, you now just disarmed yourself, right? And what the hell good is that, right? And three, it's a one-shot kind of thing. So things like that, where we're releasing it, where we're throwing it, typically are last-ditch uh, tactics. It's kind of like uh, kamai, like waki no kamai, right? where it's beside you, right? Could be a knife, could be a blade or whatever. This, what do you see, right, back here or with a, with a staff or a, a spear, right? You could have this on kind of thing where most of the staff or the stick is behind you or heito, whatever, right? Why the, why the hell would I do that, right? Well, there better be some tactical relevance to that. But one of the most obvious ones is I'm having a hell of a time with this, so I'm loading this thing up to give it my best shot, right? So typically, historically, the ninja didn't throw these things in combat unless they were trying to escape. They've already been caught because, right, there's, there's, a, there's a, an adage in the Togakure school of Nidatsu that if a ninja has to draw his sword or whatever weapon, he's already lost because they've been discovered. Okay? So a lot of people want to do Nidatsu, but they, they got an ego that needs to be known. I'm the guy. Now, this is like CIA operatives, right? Nobody nobody knows, okay? If if Hatsumi Sensei's teacher, Takama Sensei, right, if most of the people in his life had no idea that he was 33rd Grandmaster of the Togaku Review or he was a living ninja or whatever, until they read his obituary, how the hell does that make us any different? And we're supposed to be learning the same stuff that was passed down. Anyway, just a rhetorical question because we're all enlightened, so... We don't have these these ego problems, right? So anyway, so what we're looking at here is that we're already looking at the way the way we define it, two different kind of approaches to using this weapon. Now, in the samurai arts, and it's not that samurai didn't use these little discs, whatever, okay? But there is a type of shuriken jutsu that has nothing to do with these little handheld things, okay? It literally is shu ri ken, a hand release blade. Okay. And in that context, what we're looking at is a samurai or whatever where his opponent already has his weapon out, whatever. He knows this person is faster than him, better than him, whatever. And I need a freaking advantage. Right. So what they're going to do is like their hands nowhere close to their tsuka on their longsword. It's she, the other guys, you know, got the advantage. And so their hand is just here. And what they're going to do is they're going to unsheath in one motion, unsheath and throw either the tanto, the shoto, wakazashi, the short sword, a, a, a jute, something that's in the sash. They're going to throw it and then they can draw, right? It's this, right? So in that gap between letting go and him having to deal with this thing that's coming at him and this guy clearing the danger from himself, now my weapon is out and hopefully on it, right? So there's a whole other way to practice sword, yeah, okay? Because, again, we can get caught up in the fantasy of, 
always training like we have the advantage. But that's not what Ninjutsu is about. Ninjutsu is about being the underdog, being, being in a position where conventional thought and conventional beliefs say that, dude, you should lose, right? This is not going to go your way. But it's what we know, not the techniques and whatnot, but what we know about how to apply things, what we know about human psychology, what we know about right, this guy and his way of doing things so that we could take advantage of the gaps and the weaknesses in what he does. This requires you to be smarter than the other guy, okay? So anyway, right? So this is going to be important as we move through these things, right? When we talk about these things, what are we talking about, okay? Because if we're only talking about throwing a weapon, one, every star that leaves my hand or every bow shuriken that leaves my hand is one less that I have to be able to use, okay? Two, if I can keep it concealed, he doesn't know that I have it until it's too late, he can't do anything about it. He can't pre-plan. He has to deal with me on the fly, okay? Everything that he thought he knew about this situation before he stepped all goes away, okay? It's like a magician with misdirection, okay? It's one of the reasons why in the uh, Kolpo school, right, you've got this, this uh, uh, Sagan Lakomai, the reason that the hand is here, right? In, in Kukushinden, in this Katahichan Lakomai, the hand is this way. Both hands cover the gap in, in the, the, the helmet where they would have access to your neck, throat, that kind of thing. But since the Koto Ryu also had, not just the Togakure Ninja, but the Koto Ryu as secret weapons also had the Shuko, those hand claws, and the Shuriken, right? I can now, based on the way my hand position, right? Not like this. Like this, I can cup these things, right? Um, and, and hold them, okay? Uh, I show this in uh, a book I wrote a long, long time ago, Shuriken Training Manual. Uh, it's a book for beginners. Uh, that's available on the website. Tonight, we're doing a two-hour workshop. I'm sure a bunch of you have already signed up for it, but if you haven't, um, I'll try to put a link down below. It's on our events page. Uh, so instead of forward slash Friday virtual training right there, you just put in events, right? And it's, it's first one. But to our, uh, to our training, we're going to go into some of these things. Uh, and then during this Friday class, so all these things are going together. Today's session, tonight's workshop, and the Friday virtual training, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the advanced tactics of being able to move and right do this stuff under pressure in the moment kind of thing, right? So it'll be cool. Anyway, all right, so got that covered. Let's go back to these problems again. One of the problems was that, uh, or one of the, the things that just throwing to stick or this basic level training kind of skips over, right? is this idea that a ninja sees their weapons as having multiple purposes, okay? I'll give you an example before I do the shuriken, okay? Uh, this includes our fist, okay? So the uh, shuto, right, this kiten ken, right? Okay, so most people think, you know, right, karate chop kind of thing, right? Uh, they, they tend to think striking, okay? Um, except that during last night's class, I showed people how to just kind of off of a grab drape the hand over and apply the shoot though to the arm and then just kind of apply pressure this way or often uke nagash coming in it's not a strike it looks like a strike it's done like a strike but i'm not hitting i'm levering the his elbow to get it locked so we did a variation of ichimon's no kata where i caught and i locked his arm and shoulder at the same time I hit him with one. So one shoot though is doing striking, one shoot though is doing grappling, right? So three aspects, right? Striking, or cutting, right? If it's an edge weapon, but I can strike somebody with an edge weapon, right? If I have a sword, if I have a knife or whatever, I can use the spine, I can use the side of the blade, I can use the pommel, right? I can use the hand guard, whatever, okay? Again, if we limit it to just, well, it's a, it's a blade, man. So you stab people and you cut them. Okay. Well, in today's world, do that too much and you go to jail. Okay. But if I can use the weapon, because it's in my hand, I'm not going to put it down. Right. And I can use it in a way that minimizes 
uh, damage is still effective and whatnot. I also mount, I begin at the moment of defending physically against him. I'm doing things that actually prepare a defense should I have legal problems afterwards. Okay, again, you got to not think like teenagers. Okay, we have to think big enough about the problem and not just because this is not 13th, 14th, 16th century Japan. It's not. Okay, no matter how much we fantasize about it, it's not. Okay. It's actually harder for us to, to, apply, to apply this stuff in today's world, okay? So anyway, so with um, with the shto, right? So we've got this uh, we've got this striking, right? We've got this levering thing that we can do, right? And it's also our primary climbing fist, climbing hand, right? Because pressure this way broadens out and uses way more broad, large muscles to maintain stability, right? than this, okay? This changes the dynamic, okay? So there's this utility purpose, okay? Even our fudo can, most people see this and they think punching, okay? Yeah, okay, punch, right? But in our mod one, right, our, our base foundation uh, program, we have techniques off of uh, wrist grabs and things like that where we're levering, right? and boring into uh, pressure points and things like that, right? To make him let go. It's not a strike, okay? So we've got striking, cutting. We've got grappling, okay? But I might also uh, use that, not might, I do it all the time, right? I lay down on the floor, if my, if my spine's misaligned, got a rib out or something like that, and I'm gonna apply uh, uh, shiatsu to myself, make this fist, lay down, slide this up under so it's on the spine and then they just do these breathing relaxation exercises and relax my spine and my torso around it right it's well that's not really combat well if my spine's out of whack then i put myself at a disadvantage okay so uh there's that right so there's utility purposes to the weapon right with a ninja sword okay cutting Okay, yeah. We can also lever, right? I see have probably seen Hatsumi said say if it's still in the scabbard, right? It's a hanbo, right? I don't care if there's a blade in there. If it's not out, it's a hanbo. So I can use it for levering, locking, throwing, that kind of thing, right? Um, with the larger tsuba, right? The ninja used it for as a climbing tool. Then they used the longer uh, sagel, the cord to pull it up, right? Go about their business. Um, another way to do this uh, sword thing. Let's see, let's find one here that's nearly up. Somebody retied my stuff. Anyway, I'm going to pretend that there's a sage on here. We're redoing a bunch of our stuff here, right? But what the ninja would do is uh, when they were in the, in the darkness, because samurai, um, a lot of samurai were really, really freaking good. If they were sleeping, right, they're not like sleeping with their sword like a teddy bear. It's beside their their bed or their, their uh, futon or whatever, right? But they hear this noise and they're awake and this thing is out in the darkness. They're cutting through the darkness, right? So how does a ninja deal with that? Okay, because if I step on something the wrong way, right, how do I do that, right? So one of the tactics is to put the sa uh, the saya, right, on the end, the tip of the boshi this way, right? And I'm going to move through the space this way. So if I bump this guy, if I hit something, if I make a noise and he jumps up, He's going to cut the sayo away and then I can stab, right? So, right? So now it's a sensor, right? It's kind of like going through a minefield, right? So, uh, with a long stab, right? Often they were used for measuring distances. Uh, they were used for carrying things. They were, you know, if I were injured. So, but either way, right? Striking, cutting, grappling, utility purposes, those kind of things. So, this already starts to broaden things out, okay? Um, Again, we'll keep keep going with this stuff. Uh, so I know I've gone way into this, but if you're still with me, do me a favor. Maybe not now, but later on, right? Like, share, leave a comment, that kind of thing. Tell the algorithm this is important and uh, help other people uh, find it. Anyway, all right. So quick history. Again, sure it can go all the way back to caves, right? The, the first time that a person picked up a rock or a stick or whatever and threw it. Uh, at a wild animal, what I mean, that's, that's how far Hatsumi says has traced this stuff back, right? That kind of thing, right?
but over time it became more and more developed. So uh, if you ever get a chance to go to Japan and go to uh, Togakushi, uh, modern name of Togakure Mountain, where uh, the museum is there for that region. And Hatsumi says, uh, there's a muse there's a Bujinkan museum, right? There's a ninja museum in there. And it has all these relics that he inherited from Takamatsu Sensei, all that kind of stuff, right? So you can see a lot of this stuff that might, you might only seen black and white pictures in a lot of the older books and whatnot, right? Um, but, you know, that sharpen some sticks. Now you start tying them together in the middle. So you got this this cross thing or multiple ones like a wheel, that kind of thing, right? Uh, Togakure school tends to prefer less uh, less points, although there are stars there that have five points, six points, eight points, whatever, different purposes, okay? Um, but typically it's a three or four point shuriken. The four point is a senban. The three point Sakaku um, uh, shuriken, right? Uh, and the reason for that is this handheld kind of reason. Okay, so again, Friday's class we'll be going into that kind of stuff, uh, show people how to hold it and whatnot. All right, uh, but here's here's the thing, right? The more the more spokes that people think about, and I've heard people tell me this, right? The more the more spokes, man, the the easier it is to get it to to stick, or you know, you you always got a point that's that's right there, and that's true. That's true, right? The, the greater my chances of poking it, but the reason why these things pop out of the target, short of the person using the wrong kind of backing, right, like hardwood or whatever, right, is that the more points you have, the greater chance you have of a point poking them. I can see. But the fewer the points, right, Still gonna have something hit, okay? But you get greater depth of penetration because, and you can check this out for yourself, okay? If if you have a wheel shoot again that has a bunch of points, and you take any given point, so we're gonna take this one, okay? And I take a ruler or a straight edge or anything and touch it to the two points adjacent to it this way. That and a little bit is the maximum depth I'm going to get. Okay. Yeah, but I could whip that thing really hard. You could. Okay. Now, how much extra time is that taking? Right. And how much are you going to miss by? And either way, you've thrown your weapon. Right. Because we have a fast draw kind of thing. It's like dealing cards really, really quickly, right? Where you're throwing these things off of a stack do, 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 this way. Right. Drives my students crazy, but it teaches them freedom of movement because they, they are less likely to lumber. Right. But. I have a, a what do you call them? A senban, right? So senban, they they can be straight lines, but another uh, like an English translation for for the senban shuriken, they would often call it a moon star because of the crescent thing that's going on here, right? But see how far back the points are. So any given point, how much how much penetration can I get with that? Okay, so it's a trade off, right? What am I using it for? Okay, All right. So again, depth is based on the number of points, okay? More increase, uh, the more that we have increases the chance of poking somebody, less allows for more depth of penetration, okay? All right, so what do I have? We're running out of time here, so I need to keep on going. All right, so let's do this. I, I really wanna expand this because uh, I'm not here during this thing to teach moves. That's what the Friday class is for. That's what the workshop tonight is for. Uh, what I wanna take? take a look at our five skill sets based on needs and outcomes, based on strategy. What am I trying to do and how will this particular weapon help me? Okay. Um, often students are confused because I'll say, look, everybody wants to be happy. They either want to be happy, happy, or they want to at least be content and pain-free. It's the only two reasons that human beings do things, typically, right? So I'm either gonna do this, buy this, be with that person or whatever, because I think it'll make me more happy. All you have to do is listen to people talk. If I had that one more thing, then I'd be happy. If I could get rid of that thing, I'd be more, I'd, then I'd be happy, right? If I could just make sure that I have enough money for the bills to be paid and a little left over, then I'd be happy, right? If I could just get ahead of the bill, then I'd be happy. If I could 
get this person to do what I want, then I'd be happy. Right? People say this shit all the time. Okay. So here's the question. If that is the intent, one, how are we defining happiness? Because for some people, it's weight loss. For some people, it's bulking up more. They want to gain weight, right? Muscle, that kind of stuff, right? For some people, it's uh, they're lonely and they want to have a friend or they want to have a you know an intimate relationship or whatever, right? For some people, they want to be left the hell alone, right? For for martial artists, what is it? If I was a black belt man, right? Then I'd be happy. Well, why would you be happy? Well, because motherfuckers would know. They step up on me, I'd kick their ass, right? So that has nothing to do with the black belt. It has to do with bolstering self-esteem and confidence and being less afraid okay so here's the thing when we're learning this stuff right you signed in for this i know it's free right so unless you just signed in because you got nothing else to do with your life or you're trying to avoid work right what will this do to help right well it's going to add to my skill set why are you bothering to develop the skills well for self-defense okay what are you worried about right what are we defending I know this is difficult, but this is the seishin part of the training, right? Remember one of the one of the eight of hapo, right? These core kihon aspects, right? They're not really skills; they're they're develop. They're these the things that are developed, right? Seishin is is what we know and and our insight and all kinds of things, right? And how there's there's what is it? Uh, Ganho, how to use the eyes and all that kind of stuff, right? Right. What? What are we trying to develop? Okay. For most people, they just want to learn some moves. Well, what the hell? Why? Okay. Well, because I like Japanese things. Fair enough. I'm not even going to ask you why you like Japanese things. Okay. But then why ninjutsu? Why martial arts and not origami? Why not flower arranging? Why not Zen meditation? That's Japanese. They're all Japanese. Okay. See, Hatsumi said they used to ask us these questions. And then when somebody said, well, uh, the spiritual life mastery stuff, go to church, man. Doesn't hurt as much. Okay. You know, I want to learn how to control my body, get involved in dance or gymnastics. Doesn't hurt as much. Okay. So again, why? How will this serve you? This goes down. This, I'm talking about big picture now with you, but every weapon is the same. Okay. So if we're going to be a no limits person, and be able to use a shuriken to the fullest extent that this weapon could possibly be used for. And I'm not saying that these five are it, but if we're going to do that, then we need to get past movie ninja. We need to get past, well, I can't even have one because where I live, they're illegal. Okay, well, if I saw it as a model for other things that are like it, why don't I just get those other things and learn how to throw those or learn how to use those handheld or whatever. Okay. So we'll talk about some of these things, right? So when I talk about these skill sets, I'm going to be talking about outcomes. Okay. So they are skills, skill sets, areas of training, but there's an intended purpose so that when I had that need, I had that skill. Okay. So the first one, right, is throwing, right, as a distraction, or for escape. Okay. There was there was a good couple of years where Hatsumi Sensei in Japan he'd be talking about things like people need people can be looking and they think they're paying attention, but you can come right through the cloud that they put in front of themselves because they're busy inside trying to translate things. They think they're looking, but they're not. They think they're listening, but they're not. All this kind of stuff, right? And he'd walk around with a Japanese teacup, okay? And it might have a little bit of tea in it, or it might be empty, right? He might have just drank some stuff, and he's just doing this little lecture part of the lesson. And all of a sudden, like, he'd be gesturing with his hands, and all of a sudden, he just let it go, right? And we're in Japan, so you don't have lawsuits like that, right? And it would, like, ping off somebody's head or hit their shoulder or whatever, and he'd just laugh at them because it would, it would startle them, right? Because he hid this movement. But see, if we always think of shuriken as this item, then we're not really understanding how to throw an object in a way that catches this person off guard, right? 
So I want to throw it as a distraction or for escape. Okay. That's different, right? There's, there's different types of throwing skills. I'm going to teach two of them tonight. Uh, and I don't mean horizontal and vertical, right? I mean, there's a throwing method for getting it to stick and there's a throwing method to get it to leave a cut and fly away. Because if you think about ancient Japan, right? We'll talk about that here in a minute, okay? Well, I'll talk about it now, right? So the next one is throwing skills, right? For entry, for stealth, right? Okay, so here's a lone ninja trying to break into Nijo Castle and there's a sentry at every freaking entrance, right? How the hell do I get in? Okay. So one of the one of the things, and this gets coupled with psychology, right? And understanding that things were heavily superstitious back in the day. Okay. They believed in spirits and ghosts and tengu and all this stuff, right? So if I throw it so it moves more like a buzzsaw, right? So that when it hits, it'll clip off, right? So now how do I, how do I train that way? Well, see, that's that's hitting the target a certain way so it doesn't stick. It's not that it just falls down where you can pick it up and throw it back at me, right? I want to throw it in a way that it cuts this person and disappears into the grass or whatever. So, again, in that context, he thinks he just got cut by a demon or a ghost samurai or whatever, and... He runs off to get help, even if he thinks it might be a ninja, right? They didn't have walkie talkies and shit, right? So he's going to run off to get help. And what's he going to do for a minute or five? He's leaving that gate open. I can go in, right? Guess which gate I'm not coming out of because all the sentries are searching that area. I'm going out the side of the castle that has minimum security now because they had to realign and reassign, right? But throw for distraction. This might stick. It might not stick. In all honesty, if I'm throwing for distraction or escape, I couldn't give a shit less if it sticks. What I need is to induce a fear factor, a flinch response, and a covering response so that he's not looking at me when I do the next thing. So distraction, my weapon now gets to him. For escape, right? And then he looks back and now he needs to find it. Okay? And this one, it's the opposite, right? I'm doing it to make him move so that I can go in, right? Again, but you just said all this handheld stuff. I'm getting there, right? We're gonna do one more with throwing, right? Just because everybody's heavy handed on this side, okay? So uh, how about throwing for utility purposes? Just talked about utility down here, right? Throwing for utility purposes, okay? So one of the reasons that the shuriken had often had, some were just flat and, and pointed and that was it. But often, if you notice that shuriken will have either a round or a square uh, hole punched in, right? This space. One, it lightens the piece of metal, right? Because you remove a chunk out. Two, it should be big enough that your thumb pad can just come across the plate of the metal and catch that and feed it into the hand for the next throw. Otherwise, you're doing toddler shit okay this way right but that hole was also used to hold a message right just fold it up wedge it in there throw it now i do want it to stick because i'm going to throw it so it sticks in a tree or buildings back then were all made of wood paper that kind of stuff so i'm gonna stick it in wood so that the operative that's in there can find it right or maybe he's in there and needs to send a message so out while he's on his nightly stroll, he can throw it, sticks in a tree, right? So it's a carrier of messages, or there were incendiary kind of uh, chemicals and stuff that they would put in there. Because again, ancient Japan, made of nothing but wooden paper, right? Fire is a good way of creating chaos, right? So it's not like these movies where they're running through with torches and all that, where you know the, the sentries and the security can come out and cut them down. How about just from safety, right? How about if I just that or flaming arrows or whatever, right? Now I can do it from safety of a, di you know, safety from distance, right? So that kind of stuff, right? So I've got distraction, escape, I've got entry, right? I've got utility purposes, right? To send messages, whatever, okay? Uh, let's see. 
handheld, right, for self-defense. Okay, so now it's a force amplifier. Okay, I'm gonna hold it in my hand so that I can cut him with it. I can, you know, he he thinks he's being grabbed, and then there's this digging in that doesn't happen when somebody grabs you. It's the same thing with like shuko and whatnot, right? You can't see it until it's too late, and he might not still be able to see it uh, anyway, right? I might be able to snag him with it, whatever. Okay, so there's lots of ways to use a shuriken uh, to do the same kind of damage where a bigger blade would be obvious and now he's going to adjust around the weapon because he can see it right if he can see it he's going to defend against it or adjust around it if you can't see it he's gonna make different decisions okay and the last one is handheld for utility purposes right oops handheld okay um for i'm just gonna write utility but what i'm talking about here is uh, I might need it to dig or to pry something, right? Um, like a, like a wedge kind of thing. The, the, uh, the plates that the Togakure Ninja would often carry, they, here's, a, here's a stealth thing down here too, okay? It doesn't look like a weapon, okay? I combine those things in a bag. I could have 50 of them in a bag, right? Same thing with bow can have them in a bag, right? And if I'm dressed up like a carpenter or a tradesman, I can go through 50 centuries. Guards, security people, right? They're going to look in there and go, okay, go on, right? It's just like a carpenter carrying a hammer and nails. Can a hammer be used as a weapon? Yes, of course. How about nails? Yes, of course, right? But nobody thinks of that if this person's in a work area, right? Or something's being repaired, right? Those plates with that hole in the middle, right? The other use of that, right? They were called kukinuki right? Nail pullers, okay? So they'd be used for wedging. And they were also abutment plates where they were, they were, a nail was driven into a corner piece this way, right? Where two pieces had to be held together, be driven in, this plate would go over the end of it, and then they would hammer this thing over sideways because the ancient nails didn't have heads on them, right? We think claw hammers, nails have heads. No, okay? So anyway, right? So now we've got five different skill sets because this can be rougher, right? I just need to get this guy spooked a little bit so I can do my thing. This is gonna require some pretty damn good accuracy because if I miss him and it lands in grass and he doesn't hear it or it just sounds like a freaking rabbit moving, no harm, no foul, right? But I'm certainly not getting in that gate, okay? Uh, same thing, right? If, if I'm throwing this thing and I need to stick it in a wooden beam right, at this place so that my guy inside can come along and get the message, right, or I'm trying to start a fire, but it's in this big, thick wooden beam, right, it'd be like trying to hold a big lighter under a big freaking log. I'll have a fire in, I don't know, 50 years, right, but I miss the beam with this message, and it goes through the shoji screen, which is just paper, and ends up inside the, well, now it's not hidden, it's not concealed, it's not, okay, but all of these things, right, they're all different skill sets for the same tool. Okay. Anyway, I know it was a lot. Hopefully it served at least, I don't know, 10% of you. Um, and it wasn't just for entertainment value, but uh, do me a favor. If there was an aha moment in here, if there was something that kind of caught you, if there was something where, um, you know, you have more questions about it, or if there was something that, uh, that I exposed here that you want to know more about, right? Post it down in the comments section. And that way we know how to kind of move forward with other types of training and other ways to help folks uh, to be able to keep things going, right? I can't see comments that are happening while I'm doing these things in real time because we're simulcasting in like five or six areas, right? So I, that would eat up my entire screen maybe, okay? So anyway, that's what I have for this time. Hopefully you're already signed up for tonight's two hour workshop. Even if you're halfway around the world and 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time is just completely undoable. I get it. It's midweek and all that, right? Or you're watching this three days from now, in which case it's over. Doesn't count, right? Um, we're recording it, right? So anybody who registers for it, even if they can't make it, they're going to get the lessons. I'm also throwing in the uh, Shuriken training manual, which I mentioned earlier on. That normally sells on the website for $47. That's getting included in uh the recordings are in there and if you're local 
and you come in for the training, I'm including a couple of practice stars. That way you can practice outside of the dojo. And every time that kind of subject pops up in class, ta-da, you'll have some safe training things to work with, right? But that's it for now. Hopefully I'll see you again at something coming up, right? A spring camp to the end of April, uh, anything like that. And if not, well, then I'll see you next week on the next episode of Warriors Whiteboard Wednesday. See you. Training.